Hey everyone, this is Cheetor. You're watching You, Me, and YTV. Ultra Gear! Did you grow up in Canada? Were you alive in the 90s? Did you love YTV? F yeah, you did! Well, actually, let's talk about first gigs. Like, how? what was your first uh, cartoon you did? And finding that character, you know, that must have been intimidating. That's a really good question. There was a bunch in the same year, and I think it was Kissy Fur, uh, which is really obscure. Uh, amongst the first was Captain N, the Game Master. Interesting <laughs> you say that. It's because you played Dr. Wily in that. All I have to do is program the data into my creation, and he will become Captain N's greatest <laughs> job. But years later, you will play his arch nemesis, Mega Man himself. So, and Scotty McNeil played Dr. Wily. Mega Man, the blue bomber. I hate Mega Man. Let's get into that Scotty McNeil thing. You guys seem to be of best of friends in the show or at complete opposite ends of almost every show you do together. Yep. Uh, <laughs> Scotty and I are, are great friends. He's a, he's a super guy. I've known him for so long. <laughs> We've worked together since the very beginning. And uh, he's like family. It's like, you know, that cousin that you have. Yeah. And, you know, I mean, we're totally different guys, although we are born just weeks apart from <laughs> really? each other. Wow. Hey, look at me. I'm a cheetah. N no, no, I'm Cheetor. Hmm. Interesting. I, I, I am blessed with uh, and always have had this youthful voice. Mm -hmm. Um, I, I think I hated it when I was, you know, 17 because uh, I just wasn't interesting. Optimus. The word is spot on smooth. <laughs> it's a crime. A bit tacky. <laughs> you never had taste. Did you kid? When you first, heard like they're making another transformer show and they're like oh yeah it's going to be cgi was your reaction like what the fuck is cgi this was so new back then <clears throat> yeah um well i knew what cgi was um because i was really involved in the really really early stages of reboot okay um that's yeah. true you played glitch bob i did i yeah. did but even before playing these characters mm -hmm. I i'm also a writer yeah. And I the company that was going to produce it had these British guys had moved to Vancouver to do it. Gavin right. was one of them. I interviewed Gavin years ago. Great guy. Very funny. Yeah. Yeah. yeah really nice guy. Mm. And uh, and another guy was uh, I'm terrible with the last name. So the other guy was Ian and the producer guy was Chris Bruff. OK. And he was an American that had moved to Vancouver and, and had seen the potential of like why people wanted to be there and mm. do movie business there. You know, I found out that these guys were coming to Vancouver and they're going to make this show and it's going to be CGI. And they were the guys. This is now this is an old reference. They were the guys that had made the Dire Straits Money for Nothing video, which was, if not the first CGI music video. I mean, it was groundbreaking either way, right? Because this was really, really new stuff. So I, I had knew what CGI was. Yeah, I was interested because I wanted to write for this new show mm -hmm. uh, called Reboot. So these these stories are kind of intertwined because I was obviously not the original Bob in mm -hmm. Reboot. I didn't even get cast in Reboot. Um, <clears throat> and I'm not sure if I ended up writing a script, but I had meetings with them when, I mean, reboot was like drawings. They had sketches fast forward. And now this transformers cartoon comes up. And as with every show, uh, just to clarify, because a lot of people think if you want to be on a show, you just, you know, sort of decide to be on a show well everyone auditions right it's the luck of the draw and you have to you know have something that they want fortunately i had the sound and everything that they were looking for so we go in and we read for our respective roles and you know back to scotty mcneil you know he would have read for the stuff i read for i read for rat trap i read you know we all read for everything and 
then it ends up where it ends up. But my age at the time, I wasn't really a Transformers fan because mm -hmm. it wasn't that much before uh, where the original, I, I don't know what the year would be. You probably would know. 84. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So, you know, in 84, I was kind of busy doing other stuff and I was an adult. So like watching Transformers was just not really on my radar. I knew obviously all about the show and the toys and the, everything. But um, hearing that they were going to make a CGI Transformers, I just went, this is fantastic because that's going to be really cool because reboot was already out. That made huge waves. And um, I was ready for it. Like, I, I just went, this is great. Now, what I wasn't ready for was the the huge fan base. I just like, what? No! Oh! 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 They're good as new. Yeah, and twice as loud. Ow! What kind of description did they give you for Cheetor before you started? Because they obviously always kind of need a scapegoat, the younger character that gets everybody into trouble. But out of all those characters in all these Transformers series, I find you were the most, you know, likable one and had more of a character arc to grow with. You know, you start out as the person who took the first shot in the first episode. You started the fucking Beast War. Like, let's face it. Yeah. Cheater! To leading the Maximals eventually. Well, mm. now, I don't know if I knew this when I auditioned, mm. but I did know, and this is really rare, actually, to know the character arc. Mm. And, and they sat me down and said, you know what's going to happen is this guy is going to grow and he's eventually going to be like the dude. He's, he will always sort of be second in command, but he's going to be the guy. And I went, oh, wow. So they, they really uh, wanted me to know that early on that, you know, start as this impetuous young guy who's a pew, 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 to everything. And, and eventually through a series of, you know, uh, incidents and things that would make him grow, um, he is going to end up being this super dude. So that, that was really neat to know at the beginning. And that, that's very rare, actually. Extremely, extremely rare. In fact, you had the first <laughs> line in the first episode. Is that right? Ah, hull breach in Sector 7! Guidance systems failing! Right on! Was there a particular time when you were recording Beast Wars like, wow, this is the best job ever? To be honest with you, mm. uh, almost every time I, I go into a studio, I... I remind myself that this is the best job ever. Like mm. it's no matter what you're doing, but that cast was particularly fun um, because there was a huge variety of people in there. My favorite thing was my good buddy, David K. He came into that series really wide eyed and he said it, he verbalized it himself. So, you know, I'm not making this up, but he looked around the room and he went, wow, I'm finally working with the big guys. And you go, Dave, if you had a crystal ball and knew where you were going to end up, <laughs> like you're a big dude. Like he's, you know, he's huge. He does everything and he does everything really well. But there was such a, I don't know, I guess it's like a family atmosphere because it was just fun. Many of us had worked together before on different things. So there was always already that comfort level. It was really a strange setup. Most studios physically are set up in either a semicircle or a, a real U shape. And you're kind of across from the other actors, maybe 10 feet apart, maybe at the most, sometimes shorter. And then, you know, the next guy is like right beside you and you got a music stand and, you know, you got your little area. Well, this studio was like a, it wasn't like a sound stage, but it was like a mixing stage. So, so it was quite large and they had these risers for some reason, I don't know why they did it this way. It was called, it was Pinewood Studios in Vancouver. So they put us on risers, like our separate risers. And it felt like we were on this weird TV show. Like it was just weird because like my riser was this tall. and But then there would be ones that were, were higher and we each had a chair and a music stand. And I felt like we should have been spotlit. But I'm standing beside Gary Chalk, 
who is just like in today's world, he's like a meme factory if, if it existed then. Because everything that came out of his mouth was just like, Gary, really? Well, that's just prime. Because he is uh, like a little older than most of us. And, you know, he would he would say sometimes he'd like have a little cat nap and he'd go, G- Gary, it's your line. Oh, yeah. <laughs> and there was a lot of farting. Gary really has a problem with uh, he needs his guts checked because he did that a lot. And then when he, you know, wasn't just letting him rip on his own, he'd be like, hey, pull my finger. No, Gary, I'm not going to pull your finger. <laughs> I will not give an order I would not be willing to do myself. And it was juvenile. It was fun. Um, like Richard Newman was great. And of course, Venus Turzo, the poor, like uh, one of the only girls in the show, she rolled with the punches just fine. Jim Burns, he was he, it, like, he was the, the elder statesman and he kind of has a, uh, an edge to him as it is like, you know, ah, you just kind of don't, don't give me any crap. Ah, yeah. Bunch of asshole. Ah, shut up. Doing my stuff here. <laughs> And and even he kind of got into the into the scene of of uh, our vibe. We actually after recording, I don't know, 26 of them and getting a feel for like, oh, this is we're going to do some more. And this is kind of big. It was a great moment in time. A good friend of mine named uh, Cliff. He is a huge Transformers fan. Huge. Yeah. And he's actually said that the the show Beast Wars, considering he was an OG fan from the original series, he says that Beast Wars and uh, basically the weight of the stories and the compelling characters actually got him into collecting the toys again. There's got to be something we can do. He's too far gone, even for Stasis Lock. Well thought, my friend. You saved the valley. You saved the lives of those who live here. And of those who are still to come. And then, uh, there is nothing to regret. You know, that's what cartoons could be. When you don't put the parental locks on someone's ability to process an amazing story, you can actually be very moved by something. Speaking of parental guidelines or handcuffs, yeah. mm-hmm. you would have watched the show uh, in Canada, and it was called Beasties. Beasties. Because you can't have a war. No. That would really upset the children. You have them aimlessly shooting at each other every fucking episode, <laughs> every fucking minute, but don't say war. <laughs> yeah, don't say war. And as long as it's robots and they go, they can get blasted because they're just robots. I guess there's a, a humility that you must get because it's just like it's your voice that you're famous for. But if you walk down yeah. the street, nobody would. <clears throat> OK, now let me let me put this down because I'm about to drop a name. Okay. Uh, <laughs> I was in I was in Maui a few mm. years ago and we stayed in this place that was right beside the Four Seasons. It was at Christmas time and uh, my, my kids would go over to the Four Seasons and use the pool. Yeah. Uh, even though we had a lovely pool at our place, but it was just like an adventure. Let's see if we can go hang out at the Four Seasons pool. So they did, and they see Adam Sandler and his family. And, the, you know, Adam's being a good dude. And people recognize him all the time because he's Adam Sandler, right? Yeah. So I went over there one day, and my kids were they, – they said, oh, you got to come over. Maybe you'll see Adam Sandler. I, sure, I wouldn't mind seeing Adam Sandler. So I, I – Sit down. I'll give you. I'll try to make this a short story. So I, I go into the hot tub, and or the spa, and and there's this guy beside me, who is he's probably 16, and I can tell he's he's a little uh, challenged. You know, he's he's got his relatives are there, and mm-hmm. and but he's a super nice kid, right? And I always I got I have a problem. I talk to everyone, and especially kids like that. Well, we start talking you're talking and, to me right now. So <laughs> <laughs> and he's he's uh, I soon find out that, you know, he likes cartoons. I went, oh, what kind of cartoons do you like? I know what it was. I know what it was, too. I w- happened to be wearing a Transformers T-shirt, which I never do. Like, I mean, I don't walk around going, hey, I was in Transformers. You know, this, blah, blah, blah. Uh, it's just not I, 
I got it at Target. It was like I just happened to have it on and it was the lightest weight one and it was a hot day. So he he goes, oh, oh, Transformers, Transformers. So we start talking. And this never happens. I. I say, oh, well, you know, what's your favorite Transformers show? Oh, I like Beast Wars. What? Because, I mean, he was kind of a little too young to really be in the pocket. Right. Uh, so and then I said, well, who's your favorite character? Cheetor. I went, OK, this is nuts. This never happens. Right. And I never get recognized for my voice. Right. So we're talking and I say, you know, I I did the voice of Cheetor. He doesn't believe me. No, 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 you didn't. So then I do a couple of lines. Big, hey, big bot, uh, uh, ultra gear or something. And and he goes, what? And it, I can see his dad kind of looking at me going, what the hell's going on over there? What's he the doing kid, to my son? <laughs> right. Yeah. Like, why are they? What's going on? What are they talking about? And then talk the about runs. cheetos. <laughs> yeah. And he runs yeah. and he's he he goes up to his room gets his laptop that's got this shattered screen and he wants to start watching episodes with me. So I go, well, yeah, sure. You know, dial one up. We'll watch one together. And, uh, and he goes, can I get you to sign something? Can I get you? And his dad goes, what, who, what? And then I explain who I am and he goes, oh, okay. And during all this, Adam Sandler is getting asked for an autograph. And so it's near the outdoor restaurant. And, I, and I'm looking for like someone that's got a Sharpie because I'm going to go sign something for this kid. And and I said, can I borrow that? And he goes, yeah, what? What What are you doing? And I said, oh, I'm, I got to sign something for a kid. And he goes, I said, you know, there's other famous people here too, Adam. <laughs> and and he goes, really? What the? And another part <laughs> of the story was his daughters had met my daughter the previous day and they were talking about my little pony and okay. my daughter's in my little pony. So he was already sort of like, Oh, there's that voice actor kid. And I said, yeah, that's my daughter. I think they, she was talking to your daughters. And anyway, I got to go sign this thing. I'll, you know, I'll talk to you in a minute. And he goes, Oh, that's the life, man. That's the best. No one recognizes you, but you're still famous. And I go, yeah, I guess it is kind of thanks Adam. See ya. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, yeah. I really like the Cheetor stuff too, you know, like, so, you know. <laughs> so what was your favorite look Cheetor had? Because he had about, well, three in the original series, and I'm not sure in Beast Machines, I'm halfway through that, but you definitely have one or two going on. You know, I, and this is really controversial because I know, I know fans are like rabid and they, hmm. ah, no, it's got to be this one. It's got to be that one. I really like the look of Beast Machines. I, I thought it was super cool because the designers took like a comic book look that kind of graphic look and then made it three-dimensional and i thought it was really inventive because you know even at that time i could tell the the cgi was rudimentary it was not great so i'm always a big fan of sort of working within the limitations of what you have so instead of everything being all smooth and floaty and i kind of like changing it into more of that graphic cartoon like a comic book style. So that that's my personal favorite. Was there like a different company working on it? Because the animation style. like Totally different. I know. But the, it was the same company. It was mainframe. The guy who really drove that, uh, as far as I can tell, is a producer. And his name is Ace or Asaf Fipke. And he worked with uh, mainframe. And he is now like a big mucky muck at uh, DHX. So he kind of runs things there. So he was he was this young buck that that went, ah, let's make it cool. And uh, I mean, he he worked on the show prior to Beast Machines, but it mm -hmm. was the same production company. They just went, let's let's do something completely different. You know, it's interesting that you say different and the cult idea of Transformers is to transform. But it's amazing how many fans fear change. <clears throat> you know? Oh, like, that's, but that's that's humanity. That's yeah. the way people are. When I was a kid, I was kind of like, uh, nah, it's not my Beast Wars. But watching as a grown man, it's it's interesting how Beast Wars is this playful Gilligan's Island type of thing where they always kind of, you know, they're almost about to and then Cheetor will mess it up or Rat Trap or somebody or Megatron. And then Beast Machines is this like post-apocalyptic, dystopian, sad, weird techno. Like it, it was way before its time because now yeah. all movies are like that. They're like, yeah. look how miserable everybody is and how hopeless it is. 
And in the early 2000s, that's kind of ahead of its time for sure. Yeah, yeah. I, I totally agree. And and it's what you were saying about fans having their thing. Mm -hmm. It spans history, but the the one of the biggest examples of that is James Bond. Yeah. Like, oh, who's the best Bond? Well, the the best Bond is the best Bond of the era that you really started watching the movies. Mm -hmm. Aside from the fact that Daniel Craig is the best Bond. And that is coming from a guy who, I mean, Roger Moore was my James Bond. Mm -hmm. He was my guy. So it, people just, that's what people do. You know, they get locked in. Perhaps we could try something in an even simpler vein. Speaking of, you know, my James Bond, my character, dude, you are my Goku. Ah. Check out more episodes of You, Me, and YTV on Facebook and YouTube. Sweet one-of-a-kind interviews with PJ Fresh Bill, PJ Paul, Tarzan Dan, the cast of Student Bodies, the voice acting cast of Sailor Moon, and much, much more. Exclusively on You, Me, and YTV. Season 2. I'm a little yeah. beast wore out, man. I've seen like 60 episodes in seven oh days. Oh my like, God. Yeah, a, no, that's too much. Near the end, I was even like being like, are they going to get off the fucking planet already? Come on, Gilligan. <laughs> <laughs>